Living longer, living healthier, living better than ever before. Welcome to Mountain Pacific's Healthy Living for Life, a weekly series that gives you the information, education, and expert insight you need to become an active participant in today's ever-changing healthcare climate. Here now is today's program host. Whether you've been recently diagnosed or diabetes has been part of your life for a while, there are resources to help you live better, feel better, and be a healthier you. This show is for anyone who has diabetes, has pre-diabetes, or is caring for someone who has diabetes. Or it may be for those people watching right now who have a diabetes and don't even know it. I'm your host, Beth Brown. Welcome to Healthy Living for Life, a show dedicated to helping you do just that. Stay tuned. We start this morning with Sue Larson, a certified diabetes educator and dietitian from St. Peter's Hospital. Thank you for being here, Sue. Oh, thank you for having me. It is a pleasure. So we know that nearly one in 10 people in America have diabetes, and that number just goes up with age, and that um, millions of Americans have diabetes and don't even know it. Can you start out this morning to talk about some of the signs that people should look for, and if there are contributing factors they should be aware of for diabetes? Sure. Um, the signs of diabetes are, um, can be very subtle initially, but the classic symptoms are increased thirst, increased urination, dry mouth, blurry vision, it might come and go, um, unexplained weight loss, being tired and lethargic, poor he healing, increased infections. So some, those are some of the classic symptoms. They tend to come on slowly and gradually, and I think especially some seniors attribute it to aging or side effects of other medications. Risk factors for specifically type two diabetes is aging. As people get older, their risk for diabetes is gonna go up. Being overweight or inactive, family history, certain ethnicity, um, any women who have had gestational diabetes or delivered a baby more than nine pounds earlier in their life. So why is it important if someone has been diagnosed with diabetes to seek out someone like you, a professional that can help them so that they can get that supporting education? Sure, well managing diabetes is trying to balance food, exercise, medications, and stress. It can be really overwhelming at first, it can be complicated because people also have a life that they've gotta take <laughs> care of and a family and a job. And so we try to teach people how these things are gonna impact their blood sugars how they can monitor their blood sugars and get feedback, and also just to try to give them support. We're basically their diabetes cheerleaders, and we're part of the team to help them learn as much as they can so they can stay healthy. And balancing between being a certified diabetes educator and a dietitian, what do you think that a dietitian may bring to the table that maybe just a certified diabetes educator wouldn't always know about? Well, dietitians are specifically trained more in the nutrition therapy for controlling blood sugars and helping with weight management. Um, so that's specifically where we can focus a little bit more on helping clients make nutrition changes. I think people with diabetes sometimes complicate the diabetes nutrition portion more than they need to. So we actually sometimes try to step back and be like, let's just focus on smaller portions, eat less food, eat real food, reduce your intake of sugared beverages, those kinds of focuses. And we at Mountain Pacific, and I'm sure you do too, talk a lot about the importance of a patient being engaged and empowered yes. and really taking an active role in their own health. Um, can you talk a little bit about why you think that is important for somebody to be active part of their healthcare team? Well, I think the, the client with diabetes is the team leader. 90% of their diabetes management is what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, on their own, at their, in their life, at home. The rest is when they see the doctor, when they get labs done, when they see the dentist or the eye doctor or a dietitian, they might see each one of us a couple times a year. So again, staying engaged in programs, in ongoing education and support can help keep them up to date also on what's available, what's changing, what are their benefits as they change from commercial insurance into Medicare. What about family or friends? Is there a role they can play in helping somebody or a loved one that has yeah, diabetes? Absolutely. We encourage all our clients to bring a support person 
to their appointments or their classes. Um, families want to help, um, but they can also, the number one advice for family members is not to offer unsolicited advice about what people with diabetes are eating. They know what they need to eat. So family can help prepare healthy meals, shop, encourage physical activity, but um, we also can help family on what not to do. And we talked a little bit about that with age, diabetes becomes a greater risk or more complications can happen. Are there things that older adults should especially pay attention to if they have diabetes or think they are at risk of getting diabetes? Well, if, if older adults are at risk for getting diabetes, we wanna make sure that they're seeing their provider at least once a year to make sure that they're getting their blood glucose levels checked, staying on top of it. So as soon as they move from prediabetes to diabetes, they're on top of it before those symptoms even start. Most people aren't symptomatic at those early stages. And just sticking to the topic with older adults, what about those people with Medicare? Is there certain uh, benefits that people oh. with Medicare can take advantage of? Absolutely. Um, the Medicare benefits for clients with diabetes are underutilized. I think less than 10% of Medicare clients ever use their benefits. They have benefits for medical nutrition therapy to see a dietitian at least twice a year with no copay. And then they also have additional benefits for diabetes education that can be done in an accredited program by a nurse or a dietitian. And again, they get at least two hours a year for that. So people with Medicare have up to almost four hours of benefits. So I have clients I've known for 15, 20 years, and I see them twice a year and their diabetes control is great. And I feel like together as a team, we're just keeping, we're staying on track. So you've been a certified diabetes educator for several years. Yes. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about what are some of the most important changes you've recently seen that people should really pay attention to? Wow, that's a, that's a good question. Um, Tough one. When I started as a di dietitian and a diabetes educator, um, we didn't have near the tools and technology that we have now. People didn't routinely get blood glucose meters. Um, people weren't started on insulin until they were in really bad shape, and often it was really late. So I think we've got more medications, easier blood glucose meters to use, um, more knowledge about how tightly to control blood sugars, and then as seniors get older, we actually sometimes loosen things up a little bit. Okay, great. Sue, thanks so much for being here and for all oh, your information. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back after this. I'm here now with Marcy Butcher, who is also a certified diabetes educator, and she works for the Montana Diabetes Project. Thanks so much for being here, Marcy. Thank you for having me today. It's great to have you. So we know that there are a lot of people, not only in this country, but in the world who have diabetes, and that number is just getting bigger. Why is diabetes such a huge concern? Boy, it really is a huge concern, not just for the state of Montana, nationally, but globally. Um, we know that about one in 10 or 11 people have diabetes and here in the United States. But if trends continue, that's gonna be one in three oh. by the year 2050. And so huge, huge increase in numbers if things continue the way they are. And if, just to give you an idea, a third of the Medicare budget roughly is spent on diabetes and the complications of diabetes. So it really impacts quality of life, it impacts people's health, and it impacts communities, and it also has a financial impact on our country as well as individuals living with this disease. It's, it's serious, it's sometimes called the silent disease because the symptoms are very, uh, not very noticeable. It creeps up on mm -hmm. you, so to speak, and, and it can cause those serious complications such as blindness and kidney failure and heart attacks and strokes. So it's something we really wanna stay on top of. And, and diabetes education is really huge in terms of self-management and it is very powerful in that manner. 
And so here in Montana, I know the State Department of Health and Human Services, they have programs that will help Montanans who have diabetes. So one is called the Quality Diabetes Education Initiative. Can you talk a little bit about that program? Yes, so I work for the State Health Department's Diabetes Program and, and oversee that uh, work. Uh, and that work is designed to uh, help healthcare professionals become diabetes educators and help develop diabetes education programs in communities to increase access to diabetes education. And we know that if diabetes educators are supported and communities are supported in terms of developing diabetes education programs, that ultimately helps people living with diabetes because that healthcare team is so important in helping take care of a lifetime of living with diabetes. And so there's also the Diabetes Prevention Program, and that's more to help adults who are at risk of developing diabetes so that they can make those healthy lifestyle changes. Can you talk a little bit about that program? Absolutely, and I'm super proud of Montana because we are actually nationally known for our Diabetes Prevention Program here in Montana. Um, the Diabetes Prevention Program is based on a national study that showed that lifestyle change, intensive lifestyle change, including good nutrition and incorporating physical activity about 150 minutes or more a week and maybe a little bit of weight loss like five to seven percent of your weight which for most people is about 11 pounds so not a ton of weight that can re dramatically reduce a person's risk for type 2 diabetes up to 58 percent which is way better than any drug out there so it's hugely impactful for those that are at risk for diabetes it, it really reduces the risk of getting diabetes which you know, working on the front end of diabetes is really a good thing. And so those are Montana programs, and then you also help with Mountain Pacific Quality Health Diabetes Empowerment Education Program, yes. and that goes beyond Montana. Can you talk a little bit about how, with the different diabetes programs that the state does, and then the things that other organizations like Mountain Pacific can do, how does that all overlap and ultimately benefit someone with diabetes? Boy, I'm really excited to talk about the Diabetes Empowerment Education Program because we know not enough people with diabetes actually see a diabetes educator. And there's a number of reasons for that. And we're trying to engage people in healthy behaviors. Um, and the Diabetes Empowerment Program is really just that. It engages people in their health, provides some basic education, and then plugs people back into their healthcare provider and back into their diabetes educator for the lifelong help living with diabetes that they need. So there's projects going on on all kind of levels. Um, we absolutely need professional diabetes educators, but we also need these community-based programs too to sort of help with the safety net kinds of things and providing some basic education as well as some structure for communities to provide support for living with diabetes. So regardless of where a person with diabetes or thinks they might be at risk for diabetes lives, where is some place that they can go to either learn about some of those state projects or some of their community services? Are there some natural resources for them to seek out? There really are, and, and there's numerous resources. Um, your local provider, whoever your provider is, can help you with finding a diabetes education program. But if you look on the State Diabetes Program website as well as Mountain Pacific Quality Health's website, both of those sites have listings of diabetes education opportunities in, in people's com own communities or those communities that you can access. And so if you could just say one thing to somebody who thinks, as you said, it's a silent disease, we don't always know, but if they have any indication of that they might be at risk, what should they go do right now? So I would say you absolutely need to partner with your provider and be an active participant and engaged team captain <laughs> in, in your own health care. And th there's a team of people that are able to help you with that. And diabetes educators are absolutely uh, a huge part of that team. But I want to say that self-management is entirely powerful. Um, and making those positive self changes in your life can be just dramatically powerful in a person living with diabetes. It can be managed, it can be managed well, and you can live well with diabetes. Thank you so much, Marcy. And actually, after this, we are going to talk with somebody who works with our DEEP program and is going to talk a little bit more about the importance of empowering yourself and being a self-manager, like Marcy said, so that you can live healthier with diabetes. We'll be right back after this. Melanie Van Dyke joins us now to talk about Mountain Pacific Quality Health and our Diabetes Empowerment Education Program, or DEEP. Melanie's dad, Chris, is also here, 
and we're going to talk about the program all together here this morning. So when we talked to Marcy, we mentioned that DEEP is offered in Montana, Wyoming, Alaska, Hawaii, and Guam. Mm -hmm. Melanie, we'll start with you. Can you just tell us what is DEEP? Well, um, DEEP is a peer-led program. Um, it's a series of six classes, anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours long. It's completely free. Um, it is funded by Medicaid and, well, Medicare, so CMS. Um, and so it's intended for Medicare beneficiaries. Um, and it's just a fun, interactive class to get people um, talking about what they're going through and, you know, um, what maybe they've done um, to better take control of their health. And so you talked about DEEP being an interactive class and you yes. did bring one of your activities that you do with your class just so that they get some hands-on feel for what diabetes is all about. Can yes. you show us what you brought us today? Yes, so this is my favorite. Um, this is called the um, blood demonstration. It's not real blood. <laughs> it's tomato paste and vinegar. Um, but what it is, is this is the consistency of your blood based on your sugar levels. So you can see this is 100 and it's pretty um, it's, what's pump, yeah, yeah. it's what's pumping through your body when your sugar levels are about 100. And then we have a 200. So this is um, a, a, little little, a little thicker. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of, this is high. Um, you want to be in the range anywhere from 100 to 120. Um, this is 300. Again, pretty pasty. Yes. You and then put you, that on <laughs> pasta. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the... Um, 400 and this is as high as it goes um, so as you can tell it's pretty much just tomato Thick. paste yes um, but it kind of gives you an idea so when somebody you know tells you oh well my sugars are in the 250 and you can hand that to them and say okay this is what's pumping through your body right now and you know so when you're thinking that you're not feeling very well that's why that's why and so you got trained in DEEP and immediately wanted to get your dad involved in the program. And so why did you want to get him involved? Well, um, the main reason was um, when he was diagnosed in 2009, I was the one um, who took him to the hospital. And so it was very scary experience. So when I found out that I could be a part of this program, it was near and dear to me because I wanted to better understand what my father was going through. And then, um, you know, then I got to have him to a class. But um, when he was diagnosed in 2009, sugars were in the 600s. So as oh. you can see with this 400 <laughs> right. of how pasty it is, I can imagine, you know, why he felt the way that he did um, that night that we took him in. And so, Chris, you, you're here. And mm -hmm. thank you so much for being here as well with us this morning. And so why did you agree to participate in DEEP when well, your daughter came to start with, she made me. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I was in a rut with my diabetes at the time. And so when she came and asked me if I would like to go to one of her classes, I figured I could go in and help her and make her feel more comfortable in running her classes. And so I went in there and it was very enjoyable. I, en I learned a lot and it was a lot of fun. What was your favorite part of the class? The Q and A's, because the, par the people that were there were asking a lot of questions about what was going to happen in the future because they were all pre-diabetic. And so I was able to answer those questions because I had went through all of that. So it made me feel good knowing that I was passing on information that these people were looking for. Mm -hmm. That is great. And so yeah. even though Melanie was the facilitator, mm -hmm. everyone in the class interacts and talks yes. among yes. themselves yes. about how their diabetes yes. or pre-diabetes mm -hmm. is going yeah. for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Yeah. And so now that you have been through the program, what else are you doing to help you live better with diabetes? Well, I was a ver I'm a very stubborn man. <laughs> and so it was hard for them, it was hard for me to accept what they were trying to tell me I needed to do to make my uh, life better. But uh, going to Melanie's class, I was able to learn that I needed to take these steps to be around for my grandkids. And so that's, I went and saw my nutritionist and I started mm -hmm. eating right. And I started communicating with my doctor more about what I was going through for all the symptoms and and so she it, going to that class made me look at myself better and take care of myself better. And so in that class you learn about being an empowered or an engaged mm -hmm. patient. What does that mean to you to be an empowered or engaged patient? Well, you're taking care of yourself. I mean, you're taking control of your life. 
And so I, at the very beginning, it was, you're telling me I need to do this and I'm not going to listen because I've lived <laughs> my life this way. And now all of a sudden you're telling me I have to change. I can't have a steak, I gotta have a salad. I wasn't happy with that. <laughs> but in time, I accepted it and I've cut back on my, you know, certain things and now I eat more of the things and I feel better. And when I don't feel good, I call the doctor and let him know what my symptoms are. And so, yeah, it's, it's a good feeling. That's great. Yeah. And so, Melanie, with what you've learned, too, in helping with the DEEP program and being mm -hmm. part of those classes, how have you been able to support your dad? Um, I, I, I get him to do things quicker. <laughs> she, she nags. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just I like to follow up with him. Um, I feel now with being in the classes, um, when you do have those people that interact with you, it, you realize you're not the only one. Yes. And everybody's going through something a little different. And so it is really nice to have people help. And be, oh, I've been through that. And it's kind of like a support system for, you know, everybody. So I was just happy that he really enjoyed the class. And then now he calls me and he goes, I saw my nutritionist. I'm like, yay, <laughs> thank you. That's what you're supposed to do. That's great. And yes. so if someone wants to learn about the DEEP program and getting involved, what can they do? Um, they can contact uh, me at Mountain Pacific um, and just, you know, see if we're having classes in the area. Um, yep, so, so we have a website, uh, yep. www.mpqhf.org, and so anybody who wants to learn more can go there. Yep. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all we have for today. If you have any questions about what you've learned today, please visit our website, mpqhf.org, and we can direct you to the right person to answer your questions. Until next week, stay fit, stay well, and stay healthy for life with Healthy Living for Life. Thank you. Healthy Living for Life is brought to you by Mountain Pacific Quality Health. We'd love to hear from you. If you have suggestions for future programs, visit our website at mpqhf.org or call us at 406-443-4020. You can also catch us on YouTube by visiting our website and clicking on the YouTube icon. Special thanks to Fire Tower Coffee House and Roasters. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions.